Hi Future Builders! In this experiment, you're going to be extracting DNA from fruit. Every cell in fruit, just like every cell in every living thing, contains strands of DNA to replicate that cell. Usually DNA cells are woven tightly within the walls of the cell. But when you blend up the fruit and you add the salt and the soap and the water, it breaks down the cell walls. That means the strands of DNA are actually able to be lifted away from the cell and you can examine them with a microscope or just with a magnifying glass or you can just look at them. You'll know that you've isolated your DNA strands when a scummy thing rises to the top of your cup or your test tube and looks viscous. Extracting DNA is one of the first steps that scientists go through to learn about the DNA of animals, plants, and other living things. This activity covers technology and it covers science. Here's what you need to complete this activity. You'll need some fruit, berries, and bananas work really well because it's easier to see their DNA strands. Salt, a plastic baggie, a couple of cups, the narrower the better, some rubbing alcohol, a knife. You'll want to put your rubbing alcohol in the freezer for a few minutes if you can because this makes the experiment easier. Some dish soap and some coffee filters. All right, let me show you how it's done. your fruit into small pieces. The smaller the better. Put your berries into the cup. Add a tablespoon of dish soap. A teaspoon of salt. And add a third a cup of water. Now you're going to seal your bag. Mush it all up as much as you can with your hands. Till it looks something like this. Now you're going to let it rest for two minutes. Okay, it's been a few minutes, so what you're going to do next is put a coffee filter inside of a jar or a narrow cup or a test tube if you have it, anything that has a narrow lip. So what we want here is the goo, the salt, soap, and fruit juice goo that we've made, but we don't want the pulp from the fruit. That'll make it harder to extract the DNA. If you get impatient, you can give it a little squeeze. Just be careful not to squeeze too hard or you'll lose pulp and have to start over. Here is the rubbing alcohol that's been in the freezer for a while and I'm going to show you the difference between doing it in a jar and doing it in a test tube. If you happen to have a test tube, your results will probably be a little easier to see just because it's a little easier when you've got a thicker layer of rubbing alcohol on top. But if you have a jar or a cup, that's fine too. It'll still work. Okay, so here's the test tube version and here's the jar version. First, I'm gonna pour it in the jar. And then we're gonna pour it in the test tube. You can already see it start to work in the test tube. Those DNA those pink strands rising up into the alcohol layer is the DNA strands. You can get the same effect in the jar. It'll just be a little harder to see because your layer won't be as thick. So let's see what that looks like now. Here is the jar version. And this clear liquid on the top is the alcohol layer and this sort of scummy bit on the top that you can see inside the jar are the DNA strands. So the results aren't quite as fun and dramatic when you do them in a jar, but they're still there. That little floaty bit right there 
are your strawberry DNA strands or whatever fruit you have. And now you see here in the test tube that the DNA strands are all have all risen to the top. So that scummy bit that looks a lot like snot is our strawberry DNA. Here's the strawberry DNA from the jar. Because there was more goo in the jar, we got a lot more DNA strands. If you have a microscope, you can take a look at it up close and see what it looks like, magnified. Thanks for taking part in this STEM experiment. I hope you had fun learning.